In Pakistan, Safora Bibi's throat was slit after students and a colleague at the school where she taught accused her of blasphemy. 19-year-old Deborah Samuel, a college student in Nigeria, was beaten to death and set on fire after sending a message her classmates found religiously offensive. Liberal blogger Rafe Badawi was finally set free from prison after a decade but is banned from leaving Saudi Arabia to see his family. These are just some of the blasphemy stories from the past year. And then author Salman Rushdie, who in 1989, Iran's Ayatollah Khomeini, demanded be killed for writing the novel The Satanic Verses, was attacked on stage by a man now charged with attempted murder who was not even alive when the book was published and the fatwa issued. Much of the public response appropriately expressed revulsion at this attack on Rushdie and free speech. But not everyone was troubled. As it turns out, some think it's fair game for an author to be stabbed if people are angry over a decades-old book of his that they likely haven't even read. Or at minimum, they believe the victim is an equal participant in the violence. After all, can you really blame Rushdie's attacker for bringing a knife to a word fight? You can find plenty of statements like these if you look, but at their basic level, they say the same thing. This tweet from an Emirati royal is a good representative of the genre. She wrote, Free speech does not authorize you to insult, condescend, and mock other religious figures and religions. Some people don't care about their religion, but some do. Play a stupid game, you will win a stupid prize. Your call. Some people only want fame, no matter the cost or sacrifice. Free speech obviously does protect religious criticism and insult, but what's said in the rest of the tweet deserves special attention. Play a stupid game, you'll win a stupid prize. Most people would perhaps phrase it a bit more delicately than she did, but what's said here isn't so different from what the spokesperson for a UN initiative said after school teacher Samuel Patti was beheaded in 2020. The spokesperson accused those who published satirical caricatures depicting Prophet Muhammad of triggering growing tensions and instances of intolerance and hatred and violent extremism. The statement read, the inflammatory caricatures have also provoked acts of violence against innocent civilians who were attacked for their sheer religion, belief, or ethnicity. The suggestion here is that when there is violence against blasphemers, it is the blasphemer's fault for provoking such a response. If they didn't want violence, they should have avoided the expression that caused offense. Only the blasphemers apparently have agency. They can choose whether or not to offend. Their attackers have no choice how they respond to the offense. This view may seem attractive to people who considered Charlie Hebdo's cartoons to be deeply offensive examples of punching down or Rushdie's writing unnecessarily divisive. They are, critics suggest, just fame seekers looking to monetize offense and hurt for their own gain. It's other people who need to be protected from them. But this is not a sophisticated balancing act between rights. If anything, it's quite ignorant. Because in reality, victims of blasphemy-related violence and prosecution are rarely French cartoonists or award-winning novelists living in the United States. Most of the victims are religious minorities, political dissidents, LGBT activists, teachers, students, secularists, artists, feminists, lawyers, children, and otherwise non-famous people sometimes falsely accused of insulting or offending religious figures or groups. Are these all fame seekers looking for wealth? Are they just provocateurs punching down? If you've been convinced that Charlie Hebdo and Salman Rushdie played a stupid game and won a stupid prize, and that as a rule blasphemers get what they deserve, exactly how far does that principle go? Did Rafe Badawi, who advocated for a freer society, play a stupid game? Did Sephora Bibi and Deborah Samuel, two women violently murdered after being accused of transgressing the religious views of their peers, win a stupid prize? It should be obvious that Charlie Hebdo's staff, Salman Rushdie, Deborah Samuel, and the many other victims of blasphemy-related violence bore no responsibility for the attacks or threats against them. No amount of perceived or intended religious offense justifies a knife or a bullet. But if that doesn't convince you, know that the arguments you cite to dismiss what happened to Rushdie can just as readily be used to justify violence against a college student guilty of nothing other than sending a message in a group chat or a secular activist advocating for human rights. So yes, you should blame Rushdie's attacker for bringing a knife to a word fight.